guys, Mike, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're going to be working on something a little different. We're actually going to be working on restoring this V12 Lincoln Continental steering wheel. Now from what Matt's explained to me, these red Lucite wheels only came on the V12 uh, Continentals. I'm sure somebody will correct us down below. But somebody painted this at some point, I think it was like a gray color, but underneath the gray, there's a little bit of the red Lucite popping through. So what I'm gonna work on today is taking some 400 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna start by hand and start sanding down to try and let the good Lucite underneath pop through. And then Matt's gonna take it a step further and polish it and try and buff it and get a nice shine back on the wheel. Now these are super iconic. They look killer in hot rods. Uh, Matt actually got this off the Ford barn for a pretty good deal. He paid 75 bucks. It was worth the gamble to try and get this wheel looking as good, as close to as new as we can get. These go for, I think Matt said, anywhere between 15 and $2,000 when they're like totally restored or like new old stock. So what we're gonna do today is start sanding off this crappy paint. It's The loose side is flaking a little bit in a couple spots. So we're gonna try our best to get some of the red back into the wheel without taking too much material away so we don't like lose these notches or these ribs right here. So I'm gonna grab some sandpaper and get started. So we got 400 grit on the DA. I tried to start doing it by hand. It just, in the center here where it wasn't too bad, it, it worked, but the 400 grit on the DA is really taking the, uh, the old paint off. So I used the DA, uh, 400, and then a little bit of 600. But what I'm finding is like on the bottom where the, like the finger indents are and these tough spots in here where it's a little concave, it's hard to get the DA and uh, not like chew up the side of the pad. So I actually have 320 and I'm doing it by hand just to be, go real light. I don't wanna really reshape the wheel at all. So I'm just taking 320 and I've been going around the outside or the inside part of the wheel here around the hub, cleaning this up. And I'm slowly gonna start doing each, this is gonna take forever, but each individual rib here, all these ribs around the bottom, and all the fingers. And once I've done that, I'm gonna take uh, 400 again on the DA, just go over it, step up and grip, 600, 800, 1,000, and then hopefully at that point, we'll be able to uh, polish it up. But what I'm actually finding is, here, let me grab the camera. So that right there, some of the loose side starting to show through. So I haven't even done this bottom side yet, 100%, but you can really start to see the loose side.
All right, so it's slow but steady. As you can see, the wheel is starting to turn to like the burgundy or red lucite now that I've slowly been chipping away at it. So I've been actually taking uh, 320 and just sticking it on my finger to get in all of the like finger recesses. So basically I have this top part of the wheel, this part from like here overdone. I'm working on the bottom now. The bottom's got a lot of uh, paint on it. So it's slow and steady. Just figure that up, update you guys through the process. It actually is gonna look really cool when it's done. So this is 320 and then when I'm done, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna hand sand almost all of it. I'm having problems with the DA where it's getting like little divots and stuff. So I'm gonna continue down around this bottom side, back up this half, do all the notches, and then we're ready to start finish polishing six, eight thousand, and then we'll turn it over to Matt to do the final polish. to 800 grit. This is crazy how smooth this wheel's getting. There's still a couple problem areas, but I don't think that's anything we're gonna be able to work around without spending hours and hours and hours. All right, and final of a thousand. I'm probably gonna do a couple pads with a thousand grit, trying to really make sure everything's, man, this is really, really smooth. So I'm gonna do a couple pads of a thousand and just really make sure every little nook and cranny is done. And we'll wipe it down. I'm actually gonna take it outside and we're gonna see what it looks like in sunlight because it's actually a, Fairly nice day out. All right, so we're outside. You can see it's starting to look purple. It's actually starting to match Matt's trailer. You can see colors really coming out. I mean, there's a couple spots like here and and more on the back side, up here where the like the lucite's starting to crack and it's peeling. And I didn't want to really go too crazy to, before the wheel got damaged. You actually see it's how thick the steering wheel is supposed to be, and from driving and using it, it's worn down like two thirds of the way. So I'm going to turn this over to Matt. He's going to buff and polish it and shine it up nicely and figure out a home for it. Uh, we do need to pull it off the column yet, but she's moving along nicely. All right, so Mike got all the uh, all the fun work, and I use fun in quotations, uh, out of the way by getting all the really nasty stuff off, and uh, he ran out of time, had to run back and do baby things, and here I am saving the day. So. Uh, he got the majority, as I mentioned, uh, all joking aside, he, Mike got all the, uh, the rough stuff out of there, so now we can kind of move on to just the finish work. He got a lot of it sanded, so it's nice and smooth, but what I want to do is go around on the back sides, some spots that uh, I think I can get a little better once the wheels actually pulled off of the steering box. And it was really nice to use the steering box he did for the rough stuff, but now that we're into more of the delicate stuff, I want to be able to flip the wheel over, work on it on the bench, and not have to wrestle the steering box around. So we've been soaking the wheel with, uh, with some croil and also soaking the keyway area because this thing was really grimy, was probably sitting outside for a while and the whole like um, keyway thread area was pretty pretty gross and hopefully the croil did its job and now we can uh, we can keep moving here. So I'm gonna use one of these Eastwood uh, 
steering wheel puller kits here. And uh, luckily on these later Ford wheels, some of the early Ford wheels, they didn't put any type of uh, holes for a steering wheel puller, but the later ones like this, this is, uh, I think it's 40, 46 to 48 Lincoln, I believe from memory. Um, they actually have the holes in there so you can use a traditional puller. So I'm gonna do that, get this popped off. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it comes off without too much of a fight. And then we can uh, kind of get on the home stretch here and get this thing uh, all polished up and looking awesome. Oh yeah, hopefully that was good. And I like to use the, the center nut as my like kind of safety, if you will, because it keeps the, keeps from messing the threads up. And I'd rather mess the edge of the, the nut up than the threads on the column. So hopefully we can tap this guy off. Just got a little bit of crud in the keyway that you can see. It's probably causing a little bit of issues. Come on. It's broken loose. But... There we go. Usually they just pop right off. Oh, there we go. This one was pretty crusty, so it was fighting us. That was the ticket. Got our wheel off. Now we can finish home stretch of cleaning this thing up and polishing our Lucite turd. All right, so I'm gonna use a little mini polisher from, uh, from Eastwood here with a wool pad, and I'm using some 3M, uh, a few different 3M steps. I don't know if we're gonna need all of them, but we're gonna start um, with, uh, with the most aggressive here, and then we're gonna work our way down. So, I'm gonna just give it a little polish. We'll see what it does. It may, it may not do much, but I, I'm hoping it'll bring out It'll bring out the color a little bit by using this this little mini polisher here. We should be able to do something, I hope. That or it'll not do much and we're done. But hoping this will take give us a little bit more of a shine here. see that little section I did there that is kicking ass so much better so we're on the right track
All right, so I went over it with the two, two cutting steps, and then we're down to our third step here. All right, we're down to our third step with the fine polish. So I'm just going to lightly go over that with the, with the fine polish here. Just going to get some of my fuzzies off. Obviously, if you're polishing a car, you're going to be a little more delicate or cleanly with each step, but this is just an old old wheel we're trying to make better. So, and not spend your life redoing it here. Just get something that looks cool. Alright, so it's already starting to look better, just a little dull in some spots. So, put a little a little bit of polish on here. All right, so I got the wheel all cleaned up, got all my fuzzies pretty much off of the wheel here, and uh, it's looking really, really, really good. Uh, I didn't go real crazy. I will say you could spend like a crap ton of time on this if you wanted to go as making your uh, star project of your life. This is not, this is just uh, one of those videos. We like to show you guys how you can you know, buy something for cheap. I don't know if Mike mentioned in the beginning of the video or not. I'm following up with him, but uh, we basically, I spent 75 bucks on this steering wheel and steering column, um, and I basically took a chance. I knew it looked rough, but I knew the loose sight would come back, uh, at least better than it looked in the photos. And I just wanna show you guys how you could spend a couple bucks, you know, save a couple bucks over one of these wheels, do some elbow, put some elbow grease in, and especially if you got some old hot rods like I got with the coupe here, uh, that has like old paint on it or look, you know, you have an old hot rod This is the kind of stuff that like just looks perfect on the car uh, You don't you don't want a brand new cast steering wheel Necessarily in my opinion on a car. That's you know was an old hot rod or has weathered old paint um, You kind of want something that that the, all the parts on the car jive and they're all kind of the same age and look to them if you're putting a car together or you're uh, bringing an old historic hot rod back, um, this is the kind of stuff that makes a difference. So I search really hard to find some of these kinds of parts, and a lot of times I buy stuff just like you see here, and people will often wonder where I got some of this rare stuff, and uh, a lot of times it was instances like this where I put a day's worth of work, or Mike and myself together, put a day's worth of work into something to fix something to give us a really nice um, item or item that's perfect for what we want. And I didn't spend $400 on a wheel. Um, I spent $75 on a little bit of my elbow grease and some sandpaper. And we have a wheel that is awesome. So I am really psyched on this wheel. Uh, I'll get some better photos here after we're done uh, showing you guys, but basically, we got a wheel that has, you know, this is an iconic wheel. This, these Lincoln wheels are one of the most sought after um, early Ford hot rod kind of end custom steering wheels. And this one, you know, with a little bit of work, we got a wheel that looks really cool. This would be perfect, absolutely perfect, I think, on an old hot rod. I'm kind of tempted to put it on my coupe. I'm not sure if the burgundy will clash with the, with the red in the car, but I might swap it out to see what it looks like. If not, I'm gonna hang it on the shelf for sp potential other projects. This is, a, this is a keeper. I haven't been able to come across one of these wheels myself for cheap, and I'm happy to have one now. Um, I'm gonna just polish up the horn ring, put it back on, and then, uh, yeah, we're pretty much done. We can 
hanging as a trophy on the wall, but really cool. You know, this thing didn't look like it was, uh, you know, this, this translucent red burgundy color uh, under all that mess, but here we go. Got a wheel that's all cleaned up, and uh, yeah, turned something that looked like a piece of poo for 75 bucks into something pretty cool, and we still have the steering box that I can turn around, sell, and uh, hopefully at least get my 75 bucks back to a Lincoln guy between the column drop and some of the other stuff and the box itself, I'm hoping I can get my money back. And then I basically have a free uh, Lucite Lincoln wheel, which is pretty awesome and a win in my book. So that's all I have for this one. Appreciate you guys following along. Hope you guys uh, enjoy these quick little uh, kind of transformation projects. One of my favorite things to do is buy something that looks like crap at a swap meet or, or online or whatever, knowing that I can turn it around with a little bit of work. And I think this video was a good example of that. Thanks guys, catch you later.